بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ہیئرس مبین ناز آئی ایم فرام ایم کے پریپریشنس اینڈ ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس اباؤٹ انہیریٹنس سو ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس اینڈ کینڈیڈیٹس دس ٹاپک از ویری مچ امپارٹنٹ اینڈ انٹرسٹنگ ٹاپک سو اسٹوڈنٹس کین پریپیئر دس ٹاپک فار دا پریپریشن آف ڈفرینٹ ایگزامس فار سیکیورنگ ایڈمیشن ان ایم بی بی ایس in pharmacy, in DPT, or in any allied health science. So the candidates can prepare this topic for the preparation of different competitive exams like Punjab Public Service Commission, PPSC, Zoology or Biology, and Khaibar uh, Pakhtun Khwa Public Service Commission, KPPSC, Federal Public Service Commission, FPSC, بلوچستان پبلک سروس کمیشن بی پی ایس سی اینڈ سندھ پبلک سروس کمیشن ایس پی ایس سی سو دی مٹیریل کوڈیڈ ان دیز فلائٹس ہیو بین ٹیکن فرام ڈفرینٹ سورس بکس وچ انکلوڈس دی ایف ایس سی بایولوجی فیڈرل بایولوجی ملر اینڈ ہارلے ففتھ اینڈ ٹینتھ ایڈیشن ہکمین زولوجی کیمبل بایولوجی اینڈ ریاض الحق رامی بک okay so first of all we'll discuss about the contents that uh, uh, we are mentioning here includes the mendel's experimental approach and the uh, mendelian history then uh, we'll study about some useful genetic vocabulary or terms that are being used in the genetics then mendel's law of segregation mendel's law of independent assortment test cross and back cross dominance relationships multiple alleles erythroblastosis fetalis pleiotropy epistasis polygenic traits okay ji so let's start the topic first of all we'll study about the mendel's experimental approach so First of all, we'll discuss about the history of the Mendel. Uh, Mendel grew up on his parents' small farm in a region of Austria that is now part of the Czech Republic. Okay, so Mendel ki jo hai wo yahan pe early growth ke baare mein bataya ja raha hai ki Mendel apne parents ke saath jo ek small farm hai in Austria uh, yahan pe iski jo hai wo growth hui early growth and in 1843 at the age of 21. Mendel entered an Augustinian monastery a reasonable choice at that time for someone who valued the life of the mind okay so he considered becoming a teacher but failed and uh, in 1851 he left the monastery to pursue two years of study in physics and chemistry at the university of vienna so university of vienna mein uh, jo mendel hai isne physics aur chemistry ko jo hai wo study kiya for the two years These were very important years for the Mendel's development as a scientist. Uh, in uh, those saalon mein Mendel ki jo hai wo uh, kafi had tak help hui science ko study karne mein, theek hai? Uska interest develop hua science mein in large part due to the strong influence of the two professors, theek hai? And uh, the interest of the Mendel towards the science was just because of the two professors. The first one was the physicist, okay? Ek jo tha wo isme se physicist tha. Uh, the Christian Doppler, who encouraged his students to learn science through the experimentation and trained Mendel to use mathematics to help explain the natural phenomena. So Doppler ne jo hai wo Mendel ko kafi help ki uh, mathematics ke principles ko study karne mein. Then the second uh, professor was a botanist uh, named Franz Unger, who aroused Mendel's interest in the cause of variation in plants. تو یہ وہ ریسرچر یا وہ پروفیسر ہے جس نے مینڈل کا انٹرسٹ ڈیولپ کرایا ویریشنس یعنی جینیٹکس کو لے کے پرنسپل آف ویریشنس کو اسٹڈی کرنے کے لیے ٹھیک ہے تو یہ دو پروفیسرس تھے کرسچن ڈاپلر اینڈ فرینس انگر جن کی ہیلپ سے جو مینڈل ہے اس کو میتھمیٹک میتھمیٹیکل ریلیشن شپس سمجھ میں آنا شروع ہوئے اور ان کو پھر اس نے یوز کیا ان ٹرمینالوجیز کو فار اسٹڈنگ ویریشن ان پلانٹس اوکے اور ان ادر لیونگ تھنگس سو آفٹر اٹینڈنگ دا یونیورسٹی 
Mendel returned to the monastery and was assigned to teach at a local school. Any uh, monastery, when he came back, he started a local school mein padhana start kiya, where several other instructors were enthusiastic about the scientific research. And this was such a school where there were some other researchers who had an interest tha, uh, related to the uh, science. So in addition, his fellow monks shared a long-standing a fascination with the breeding of plants. Around 1857, Mandel began breeding garden peas in the Abbey Garden to study inheritance. So, in 1857, Mandel named Garden mein pea plant, which is the first thing grow the plant, so that he can study the inheritance or variation ke relationships in plants. Mein unko study kar sake, hai? Although the question of heredity had long been a focus of curiosity at the monastery, so Mandel's fresh approach allowed him to deduce the principles that had remained elusive to others. Okay? So uh, Mandel ne jab isko study karna start kiya, to jo ek curiosity thi different uh, researchers or scientists may uh, related to the uh, principles of variations in plants. Wo inko samajhana start huye. Okay? Now, uh, ab hum batayenge reason ke Mendel ne apni research ke liye pea plant ko hi kyun study kiya. So we have two reasons for that. Ek to ye reason hai ke uh, jo pea plant hai uski bahut sari varieties hai. Okay. So one reason Mendel probably choose to work with the peas that there are many varieties. Ki bahut sari varieties hai. Okay. With reference to the seed shape, seed color, or the plant height, or the flower color, and so on. Okay. So. For example, one variety has the purple flowers and the other variety has the white flowers. So, this is a character. Ki baat ho rahi hai, hai? Still, we are just focusing on one character. One focus character is flower color. There are two types of colors, purple and white flower ke jo colors. Hai, uh, is ke do, uh, forms mein plants exist in these forms. Pea plants. Okay? Now, a heritable feature that varies among the individuals, such as the flower color, is called a character. So, here we character ko define karte hai, ke character. Kya hai. Character is a such feature, hai, yani a such khususiyat hai, jo ke heritable hai, jo hamare genes mein present hoti hai, aur jo next of springs mein easily transfer ho sakti hai. Thik hai. So, here we flower color ki example di gayi hai, ke flower color a character hai. अभी जो flower color है वो different different तरह का हो सकता है ठीक है तो उसको हम कहेंगे कि ये traits हैं so each variant for a character such as purple or white color for the flowers is called a trait so जो हमारे पास flower color है ये तो एक character हो गया but flower color की जो variation है they might be of purple or they might be of white color. So, this purple white color is the flower color ki further jo hai wo variation. Hai, to isko hum trade karte hai, okay? So, other advantage, a second advantage, so uh, Mendel, uh, ek reason hai ke why Mendel chose the pea plant for uh, his studies. So, second advantage is that the pea plant hai, it has short generation time. Okay? बहुत जल्दी grow कर जाता है and large number of offsprings are produced और बहुत कम time में हमें ज़्यादा number जो है वो इन plants का देखने को मिलता है. So these were these were the two reasons why Mendel chose the pea plant ठीक है और character और trait में क्या difference है and then we studied about the uh, Mendel's early history ठीक है कि कैसे कैसा Mendel का जो है वो interest develop हुआ science में then उसने mathematics और uh, jo uh, ek uh, uh, variation hai plants mein unko study karne ke liye usne kaise mathematical relationships ko study kiya so it was all about the early history of the mandal now we'll study about some uh, useful genetic vocabulary kuch terms hain jo genetics mein most commonly used hoti hain aur uh, these terms are very much important you need to focus on each and every term okay this is very very much important point so, first of all, what is a gene? Gene is a sequence of the nucleotides at a specific place, okay? Any gene jo hai wo nucleotides ka sequence hota hai and we know that nucleotides are the subunits of the DNA, okay? So, ab gene ki jo position hai chromosome ke upar, that is known as the locus. So, uh, 
यू कैन सी हियर इन द डायग्राम यहाँ पे हमें शो किया गया है फॉर एग्जाम्पल दिस बी बी इज अ जीन ठीक है और इस पूरे दो क्रोमोसोम्स के ऊपर ये बी जिस जगह पे प्रेजेंट है जिस लोकेशन पे प्रेजेंट है दैट इज नोन एज द लोकस ऑफ दैट जीन ओके नाउ एलील सो जीन्स दैट डिटरमाइन द एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ अ पर्टिकुलर ट्रेट कैन एग्जिस्ट इन आल्टरनेटिव फॉर्म्स कार्ड दी एलील तो जो एक जीन है उसकी दो फॉर्म्स हैं ठीक है मोस्ट कॉमनली uh, दो से ज्यादा मोस्ट कॉमनली दो फॉर्म्स होती हैं लेकिन कुछ में दो से ज्यादा भी फॉर्म्स एग्जिस्ट कर सकती हैं सो so, uh, दो एक जीन की जो जो आल्टरनेटिव फॉर्म्स होती हैं उन फॉर्म्स को हम कहते हैं एलियल्स ठीक है और uh, जो दो होमोलोगस क्रोमोसोम्स हैं इन दोनों होमोलोगस क्रोमोजोम्स पे ये एलील्स प्रेजेंट होती हैं तभी एक जीन जो है वो कम्प्लीट होता है ओके okay? so uh, now the alleles are of further two types uh, the first one is the dominant allele okay so the dominant allele jaise dominant uh, jo word hota hai uska meaning hai ghalibana so dominant allele kaisi allele hoti hai jo dusre uh, dusri type ki allele ka jo effect hai usko hide kar degi usko chupa degi so the dominant allele is the one that hides the expression of the other allele now the second one is the recessive allele okay so recessive allele is the one that is going to be masked ठीक है आ, तो ये वो अलील है जिसका एक्सप्रेशन मास्क हो जाएगा हाइड हो जाएगा छुप जाएगा और इसको कौन छुपाएगा कौन हाइड करेगा इस वन इज द डोमिनेंट अलील सो यू कैन सी हियर इन दिस रिलेशनशिप यहाँ पे हमें दो जो है वो एक एक कंप्लीट जीन है जीन ए ठीक है और इसकी दो अल्टरनेटिव फॉर्म्स हैं द वन इज द कैपिटल एंड द सेकेंड वन इज द स्मॉल so the capital one is the dominant allele and uh, the small one is the recessive allele तो so, ये जो हमारे पास dominant allele है ये इस recessive allele के effect को छुपा देती है okay hide कर देगी now the true breeding so what is true breeding so true breeding is when uh, uh, over many generations of the self pollination the plants are going to produce only the same variety as the parent plant ठीक है तो ट्रू ब्रीडिंग एक ऐसी ब्रीडिंग है जिसमें एक प्लांट की अगर सेल्फ पॉलिनेशन हो तो वो अपने जैसे पेरेंटल प्लांट ही प्रोड्यूस करेगा ओके सो फॉर एग्जांपल अ प्लांट विद पर्पल फ्लावर इज ट्रू ब्रीडिंग इफ द सीड्स प्रोड्यूस्ड बाय द सेल्फ पॉलिनेशन इन सक्सेसिव जनरेशन गिव राइज टू द प्लांट दैट ऑल्सो हैव द पर्पल फ्लावर तो यू कैन सी हेयर के एक प्लांट जो है अगर पर्पल फ्लावर है ठीक है उस प्लांट के पास तो उसकी अगर सेल्फ पॉलिनेशन कराया कराई जाए कि अपने ही जैसे पर्पल फ्लार के प्लांट से उसकी ब्रीडिंग कराई जाए तो नेक्स्ट जितने भी प्लांट्स बनेंगे उन सब के पर्पल फ्लावर्स होंगे सो दीज आर नोन एज द ट्रू ब्रीडिंग वराइटीज विच ओवर मेनी जनरेशन आर गोइंग टू प्रोड्यूस द प्लांट्स दैट आर हैविंग द एक्सैक्ट सेम फिनोटाइप एज द पेरेंट्स नाउ दी मेटिंग और द क्रॉसिंग ऑफ द टू ट्रू ब्रीडिंग वराइटीज इज कॉल्ड दी हाइब्रिडाइजेशन तो जब हम बात करते हैं मेटिंग की या क्रॉसिंग की बिटवीन द टू ट्रू ब्रीडिंग वराइटीज यानी एक तो बिल्कुल प्योर ट्रू ब्रीडिंग वराइटी हैविंग द पर्पल फ्लावर एंड द सेकेंड वन इज द ट्रू ब्रीडिंग वराइटी द वाइट फ्लावर सो इफ वे गोइंग टू क्रॉस दिस टू स्पीशीज टूगेदर सो दिस इज नोन एज द हाइब्रिडाइजेशन ओके नाउ इन ट्रू ब्रीडिंग पेरेंट्स द पेरेंटल जनरेशन you can see here the purple flower and the white flower uh, having plants these are the parental plants okay so this one is the parental generation aur agar hum parental generation ke baad inke cross ke baad next inke offsprings ko dekhe so they would be uh, showing the f1 generation these hybrids would be showing the f1 generation okay so their hybrid offsprings are the f1 generation so that is known as the first filial generation the word filial have been derived from the latin word for the sun theek hai to latini zuban mein jo filial word hai uska meaning hota hai sun so what is f2 generation agar hum baat kare f1 ki to f1 uh, generation mein jo hame plants milte hain agar inki aapas mein pollination karwai jaye theek hai if the plants present in the f1 generation are going to uh, self pollinate so f2 plants will be produced that is known as the second filial generation okay so uh now what is homozygote or the heterozygote an organism that has a pair of the identical alleles for a gene encoding a character is called a homozygote in agar hum ek aise organism ki baat kare jisme 
एक स्पेसिफिक जीन के लिए दो एलील्स हों और वो एलील सेम हों ठीक है तो उसे हम होमोजाइगोट कहते हैं और एंड इज सेट टू बी द होमोजाइगस फॉर दैट जीन सो यू कैन सी हियर हमें यहाँ पे नजर आ रहा है दिस वन इज द होमोजाइगस पर्पल फ्लार इज हैविंग द टू एलील्स these two alleles are the dominant ones you can see here they are represented by the uh, capital uh, word capital letter p so these are the homozygous okay so you can see here uh, the last one these are the recessive or the smaller ones so these are the homozygous for each other okay so in the parental generation the purple flowered pea plant is homozygous for the dominant allele you can see here ke okay, hamare pas p1 generation mein Uh, जो पेरेंटल जनरेशन है उसमें पर्पल फ्लावर्ड प्लांट जो है पी प्लांट जो है इट इज होमोजाइगस फॉर द डोमिनेंट पी एलील एंड द वाइट प्लांट इज होमोजाइगस फॉर द रिसेसिव एलील ठीक है तो जब दो सेम टाइप की एलील्स प्रेजेंट होंगी तो इसे हम होमोजाइगस ही कहेंगे होमो मीन्स सेम ओके नाउ होमोजाइगस प्लांट ब्रीड ट्रू बिकॉज ऑल ऑफ देयर गैमिट्स कंटेन द सेम एलील आइदर पी और द आइदर कैपिटल पी और द स्मॉल पी Now what is uh, heterozygote? An organism that has two different alleles for a gene uh, is known as heterozygote, or is said to be the heterozygous for that gene. So here we can see that the purple flowered plants are heterozygous because they are having one dominant allele and one recessive allele. Because these two alleles are different, the dominant is being represented by the capital letter and the recessive is being represented by the small letter so these two are heterozygous and we know that the hetero means having different so a hetero means different so uh, you can simply memorize these terms by the homo or hetero so uh, where you will observe the homo homozygous term so uh, you will uh, surely indicate it um, or you can refer it to the same okay these might be same dominant or might be same recessive and if we are going to observe the term hetero heterozygous so hetero means different so you will um, refer it to the different uh, combinations to a, to a combination of two different alleles one dominant and one recessive okay see so, ji so unlike the homozygotes heterozygotes produce gametes with different alleles so they are not true breeding okay so agar hum baat kare heterozygotes ki होमोजाइगोट्स में तो सेम टाइप की ही गैमिट्स प्रोड्यूस हो जाती हैं लेकिन हेट्रोजाइगोट में दो डिफरेंट टाइप्स की गैमिट्स प्रोड्यूस होती हैं एक वो गैमिट्स जिनमें डोमिनेंट एलील जाएगी और दूसरी वो गैमिट्स होंगी जिनमें रिसेसिव एलील मूव करेगी ओके सो नाउ वट इज फिनोटाइप एंड जीनोटाइप सो द फिजिकल अपियरेंस ऑफ एन ऑर्गेनिज्म और द ऑब्जर्वेबल ट्रेड्स आर नोन एज इट्स फिनोटाइप ओके तो फिनोटिपिकली यानी फिजिकली इसको हम कहते हैं कि फिजिकल अपीयरेंस एक ट्रेट की जो है उसे हम कहते हैं फिनोटाइप एज यू कैन सी हियर यहाँ पे नेम लिखे हुए हैं पर्पल एंड वाइट सो पर्पल एंड वाइट अगर हम फिजिकली देखते हैं फ्लावर्स को तो हमें जिनका कलर नजर आता है इफ वी आर गोइंग टू नेम द कलर सो दिस कलर नेम वुड बी द फिनोटाइप और अगर हम जाके देखते हैं कि इस कलर की जेनेटिक रीजन क्या है जेनेटिकली यू कैन सी हियर जेनेटिकली जीन और उसमें किस टाइप की एलियल्स प्रेजेंट हैं सो इट वुड बी नोन एज द जीनोटाइप ओके सो द जेनेटिक मेकअप इज द जीनोटाइप यू कैन सी हियर एंड द फिजिकल अपियरेंस ऑफ द ट्रेट इज द फिनोटाइप Now, a cross for the one particular character is the monohybrid cross. अगर हम एक ऐसे cross की बात करते हैं जिसमें हम सिर्फ एक ही character को study करेंगे For example, the uh, flower color, okay, a seed shape or the flower color. अगर हम एक ही की बात करते हैं खाली seed shape को study करें या खाली हम flower color को study करें तो it would be the monohybrid cross. But if we are going to study the uh, cross for the two particular characteristics, okay? So this would be the dihybrid. Di means two, like mono, um, just like the mono means one. So in mono, uh, there is only the study of one particular character, or in dihybrid cross, we are going to study the two particular characters. Like if we are going to study the seed shape. for the pea plant if we are going to study the seed shape and the seed color simultaneously in the same cross then it would be a dihybrid cross okay so now 
we have done with the most important terms, the monohybrid, the dihybrid cross, the genes, the alleles, the dominant, the recessive alleles, okay? The parental generation, the first filial, the second filial generation, uh, and all of these. So these uh, terms were very, very much important. And you need to focus on each and every term because these are very much important uh, for uh, your exams. Now we will study about the cross-pollination of the pea plant by the Mendel. Okay, so cross-pollination of the pea plant by the Mendel. So Mendel choose to track on the those characters that occurred in the Mendel choose to track only those characters that occurred in two distinct or alternative forms, such as the purple or the white flower color. Okay. So uh, Mendel ne jo hai wo us uh, character ko study kiya, jo ke most distinguishable character tha, jisme jo hai wo do distinctive, ek ek character liya, thik hai, flower color. Or flower color uh, jo hai wo ek uh, pea plant ka ek aisa character tha, jisme do distinctive forms thi, jinko hum physically uh, clear cut differentiate kar sakte hain. Uh, one uh, species was having the purple colored flowers and the second species was having the white <coughs> colored flowers, okay. So he also made sure that he started his experiments with varieties that were true breeding. Um, we have also studied about the tree breeding varieties that over many generations are going to produce the uh, same varieties as the parent plant. So for example, a plant with purple flower is true breeding if the seeds produced by the self-pollination in successive generations give rise to the plants that also have the purple flowers. So what the Mandel, Mandel did, so Mandel cross-pollinated the two contrasting true breeding pea varieties, for example, the purple flowered plants and the white flowered plants. So Mandel ne kya kya yahan pe, ek purple flowered plant or ek white flowered plant jo hai, in ki true breeding varieties ki aapas mein pollination karwai. So the mating or crossing of two true breeding varieties is known as the hybridization. The true breeding parents are referred to as parental generation and their hybrid offsprings as F1 generation. And mm -hmm. after the self-pollination of the F1 hybrids, the next one is the F2 generation or the second filial generation. So we have studied about these terms already. So Mendel's. Quantitative analysis of the F2 plants from thousands of genetic crosses like these allowed him to deduce two fundamental principles of the heredity now called the law of segregation and the law of independent assortment. So Mandel ne is cross ko study karne ke baad, two laws to hain wo propose kiye. The first one was the law of segregation and the second one was the law of independent assortment. So first of all, we'll study about the law of segregation. So uh, the experiment produced a very different result. Any Mendel ne kya experiment kiya? Purple flowered plants were um, crossed with the white flowered plants and the result in the F1 generation, the all hybrids were having the purple flowers, okay? So what happened to the white flowered uh, plants genetic contribution to the hybrids? Here is a question that if in the F1 generation there are all plants with purple flowers, hai, then what happened to the uh, white flowered trait? So white flowered trait, what happened to the white So if it were lost, if it is like that the white flower uh, trait hai, it has been lost, so then the F1 plants could produce only purple flowered offsprings in the F2 generation. So if we obtain self-pollination in the F2 generation, so if this is a simple jo hai, wo experiment, a little analysis, hai, wo ye, if F1 generation is self-pollination, if F1 uh, plants are going to self-pollinate with the F1 uh, plants, so uh, we'll obtain the F2 generation. And in F2 generation, the Mendel observed both the purple flowered plants as well as the white flowered plants. So, if we have F1 generation in purple flowered plants, so, can we say that the white flower the trait has been hired or lost? And if it's lost, then why it's going to reappear in the F2 generation? So, the Mendel observed that the purple flower trait has been hired or lost. So, can we say that the white flower trait has been hired or lost? So, can we say that the purple flower trait has been hired or lost? So, can we say that the purple flower trait has been hired or lost? So, can we say that the purple flower trait
So, but when Mendel allowed the F1 plants to sell for cross pollinate to obtain the F2 generation, so in F2 generation, he observed both the purple and the white flowered plants. Okay. So the results were having 705 purple flowered plants and 224 white flowered plants. Okay. And uh, these data fit into a ratio of three purple to one white. Okay. So this ratio was three to one, three purple and one white. So Mandel reasoned that the heritable factor for the white flower did not disappear in the F1 plants, but was somehow hidden or masked. So now Mandel has the reason that uh, he provided that the white uh, flower ka jo trait hai, it just not, uh, has been lost. It's just hidden or masked in the F1 generation. Okay, so That's why it just reappeared in the F2 generation. So dominant alleles hide the expression of another allele. Now we are telling reason that what is the genetically kya reason hogi. Uh, as we know that there are two types of the alleles. Dominant alleles are those that uh, are going to hide the expression of the other allele. So the allele, the recessive allele is the one that is going to be masked. Okay. So in Mandel's terminology, purple flower color is dominant and white flower color is recessive trait. So that's why the F1 generation we have observed that the mom the plants they, they were having purple flower. So it means that the purple flower uh, trait is dominant and the white flower trait is a recessive trait. This is why it F1 and F2 have reappeared. Okay? So Mandel observed the same pattern for inheritance in six other characters. So, flower color ke ilawa, Mendel ne pea plant jo hai, uske total uh, jo seven traits hai, unko study kiya. You can see here the flower color. Uh, flower color is a character aur iske do traits hai. The dominant is purple and the recessive is white. Okay. Seed color uh, is having the dominant yellow and the recessive green color. Seed shape, dominant is brown and recessive is wrinkled. For the pod color, dominant is green and the recessive is yellow. For the pod shape, dominant is inflated and recessive is constricted. For the flower position, dominant is axial and recessive is terminal. For the stem length, dominant is tall and recessive is dwarf. So you can see here, counting the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The Mendel ne total seven traits, seven characters to the plant ke wo study kiye. And you can see here, yes, seven ke seven jo characters the they are having uh, two distinctive uh, um, traits okay each character is having two distinctive traits or agar hum just like the first one just say parental generation in dono ko cross karwaya gaya aur f1 ko obtain kiya gaya aur then f2 generation ko obtain kiya gaya to hame three ratio one nazar aayi three purple for the dominant and one recessive for the white similarly in tamam traits ko agar hum observe kare or in traits, uh, if we have pollination in this way, then in F2 generation, we have same three ratio one. Aati hai. Three for the dominant traits and one for the recessive traits. Okay? So, uh, for example, when Mendel crossed a true breeding variety that produced smooth round pea seed with one that produced wrinkled seed, all the F1 hybrids were having round seeds. And uh, then in F2 generation, 75% were uh, round and 25% were wrinkled. So it was the exact same, 3 ratio 1. Okay. Now, deductions of the Mendel's studies. So the first deduction is that alternative versions of the genes account for variations in inherited characters. Means that we have the genes hain, unke alternative forms exist karti hai, hai paas in the form of alleles. So the gene for the flower color in pea plant exists in two versions, purple flower and white flower. Okay. Gene is a sequence of nucleotide located on the chromosome at specific place that is known as the locus. And each gene is having the um, uh, is having the alternative forms that are known as the alleles. Okay. So we have already studied about that. You can see here. Uh, these are the two homologous chromosomes and uh, uh, the P and the R, A, B, C, all of these are the genes. And you can see here, each gene is having the two alleles, okay? So one is the dominant and the other one is the recessive allele. So Mendel ki jo second pas output hai wo ye, ye for each character an organism inherits uh, a specific gene and two copies of uh, the gene or you can say two alternative forms of a gene that are known as the allele. 
as you can see here, we have already discussed about the alleles. Each gene is having two alleles, okay? So Mendel made this deduction without knowing about the role or even the existence of the chromosomes. Mendel's most important thing is that at that time, he didn't know chromosomes about the chromosomes, okay? So, in this case, Mendel had made Each somatic cell in a diploid organism has two sets of the chromosomes, one set inherited from each parent, and a genetic locus is actually represented twice in a diploid cell, once on each homologue of a specific pair of the chromosome. So the two alleles at a particular locus may be identical, as in true breeding plants of Mendel's P or alleles may be different. Okay, so it's all about we have already studied. Uh, about the alleles, these um, might be of similar type, you can say dominant or the recessive, or these might be of different types, you can say one dominant and one recessive, showing the heterozygosity. So, third reduction, kya thi Mendel ki ji? if the two alleles at a locus differ, then one dominant allele uh, determines the organism's appearance and the other recessive allele has no effect on the organism's appearance. So, if we have two alleles expressed in the form of heterozygous uh, condition, so the dominant allele will express the recessive allele ko jo effect hai, it will be masked by the dominant allele. Okay? Now, the last, uh, the and last and the final part of the Mendel's model, or you can say reduction on the output, is the law of segregation. So, law of segregation, we will state that we have completely seen that Mendel has done the cross ko kiya, and after studying the cross, he has the law of segregation ko kis se present kiya according to his studies. Okay? So, according to law of segregation, the two alleles for a heritable character segregate or separate from each other during the gamete formation. As you can see here, these are the two homologous chromosomes having a specific gene A uh, with the dominant capital A and with recessive small a allele. These two alleles are located on uh, separately on two homologous chromosomes and we know that these homologous chromosomes are going to be uh, segregate uh, during the process of meiosis in separate gametes. So you can see here one homologous chromosome having the uh, one chromosome having the one allele is going to segregate in separate gamete and the other chromosome having the other allele is going to segregate in other gamete, okay? So, now what happens? Uh, actually, uh, each gamete receives only one of the two alleles. So, you can see here, a gamete to has a specific allele he will receive karta hai. And now, what are going? what is going to happen with these gametes or with these alleles? These alleles will unite again during the random fertilization of the gametes, okay? So, uh, we know that uh, the gametes are the eggs or sperm, so it's the history related to the egg or the sperm, okay? Now, uh, does the Mendel segregation model account for 3 ratio 1? Uh, he observed in F2 generation. So, for the flower color character, the Mendel predicts the two different alleles present in F1 individual, which are going to segregate into gametes, and half gametes are going to receive the half uh, alleles for the purple flower color, and the other half gametes are going to receive the other half alleles for the white flower color. Okay. So, uh, the capital letter is being uh, used for the dominant and lower case letter is being used for the recessive allele. Okay, you can see here for the purple flower, it's dominant uh, capital P. For the white flower, it's recessive small p. Now, in the F2 offspring, what color will the flowers be? So, this one is the uh, 3 ratio 1. This, this, this slide is going to predict the 3 ratio 1 that uh, in F2 generation, you can observe here. In parental generation, purple and white, okay? Now we are going to write their genotypes. For the purple, uh, these are the homozygous dominant. For the white, these are the homozygous recessive. And in F1 generation, heterozygous dominant, okay? Now, if we are going to uh, make a Punnett square here, uh, you can see here the, pu the purple flowers having this genotype uh, are going to uh, self or cross pollinated here. So this purple flower, capital P and the small p, the, the dominant and the recessive are going to segregate in separate gametes. Now, this one is the fertilization of the gamete. So you can see here, one fourth of the plants have two purple flower alleles, okay? 
so you can see here one fourth uh, one fourth of the plants have inherited two purple flower alleles so you can see here from these four this first one is the one fourth that is have that is homozygous dominant that is having two purple flowered alleles means two dominant alleles okay now the next one is one half of f2 of springs have one purple and one white flower one half means uh, we have done with one okay one fourth now one half these two you can see here these two are heterozygous dominant one dominant and one recessive one dominant and one recessive so they are having one purple and one white flower alleles now the last one uh, one fourth this one fourth is having two white flowered alleles that are recessive means these are homozygous recessive so phenotypically they are they, there is three ratio one okay uh, three purple and one white but genotypically this is one two and one okay one to one ratio now mendel's uh, model accounts for three ratio one traits that he observed in the f2 generation now the next one is the law of independent assortment so a cross for one particular character is mono hybrid cross like the seed shape cross for the two characters is tie hybrid cross like for the seed shape and color now the mendel worked out the second law of inheritance by following two characters the seed shape and the color the seed uh, color may be yellow or green and seed shape may be smooth or wrinkled okay round or wrinkled for the uh, seed color we are going to use the gene y uh, and dominant allele uh, for the yellow and recessive allele for the green similarly for the seed shape we are going to use the gene r a dominant uh, r for the round and recessive r for the wrinkled okay now what is law of independent assortment it states that two or more genes assort independently Uh, that is each pair of the alleles segregate independently of the other pair of the alleles during the gamete formation so according to the law of independent assortment if we are going to uh, cross the uh, two plants uh, and uh, these two plants are having uh, two traits if we are going to study the di hybrid if we are going to uh, undergo a di hybrid cross having the uh, two characters if we are going to study um cross uh, for the two characters at the same time for the seed shape for the seed color so we know that for the seed shape there is one gene and for the seed color there is an other gene so for the same cross their alleles will assort independently their alleles are not dependent on each other okay so a cross between a plant now there is a cross between a, a plant of the yellow and round seeds with the plant having wrinkled and green seed so you can see here for the uh, yellow and round the wrinkled and green these these are their genotypes and first of all the gametes will form yellow round and uh, wrinkled green so uh, these are the two gametes so you can see here their assortment is independent now after their uh, fertilization we'll observe the yellow round so there is a cross between the uh, yellow round seeded plants with the wrinkled green seeded plants so these are the two gametes and finally we are going to obtain the hybrid having the yellow uh, round seeds okay uh, this one is the plant having the yellow round seeds now if we are going to uh, self fertilize the plants in f1 generation so first of all from this we are going to make these four gametes okay so these are the four gametes having uh, the dominant yellow uh, round alleles the yellow wrinkled alleles the green round and the green wrinkled alleles okay so from the f1 generation one plant one male plant having uh, the sperms with these uh, genotypes or uh, the female plant having the eggs with these genotypes now this one is the punnett square that we are going to use the uh, um, to to judge or analyze the results of uh, the law of independent assortment okay so finally we will obtain these results in 9331 ratio because there are 16 offspring so from the 16 the 9 are having the uh, round and yellow seeds okay 
so you can see here these nine are having the round and yellow seeds and we know that these uh, yellow uh, are on the plants having uh, both the homozygous dominant y alleles or the heterozygous dominant y alleles okay for the uh, round these would be homozygous dominant r or ho heterozygous dominant r alleles okay so these are the nine uh, with you know phenotypically these nine are uh, uh, round and yellow and then three the three are uh, the round and green okay so for the round and green you can see here the genotypes are also mentioned now three are the wrinkled and yellow so these are the three having a wrinkled and yellow uh genotype and the one is the only that is green and wrinkled okay so the answers are phenotypically with the ratio 9331 so these combinations result in four phenotypic categories the 9331 nine are yellow round and three are uh, green uh, round and three are uh, yellow wrinkled and only one is green wrinkled okay so when mendel did the experiment and classified the f2 of springs results were closer to the 9331 ratio so the hypothesis uh, was stating that alleles for one gene controlling the seed color that they get into gametes independently for the alleles of other genes such as the seed shape okay now what is probability or the product rule so probability rule uh, is very useful in genetics and uh, this is the product rule which states that the probability of the two independent events occurring together can be calculated by multiplying the individual probabilities of the events okay so if we know uh, the individual probabilities for the monohybrid crosses then we can calculate uh, these uh, probabilities for the dihybrid hybrid crosses by multiplying individually their events together okay so you can see here for the seed shape the independent probability is uh, the probability or the chance of round is 3 by 4 and uh, for wrinkle is 1 by 4 similarly for the independent probability of seed color chance for yellow is 3 by 4 and for green is 1 by 4 now for uh, the joint probability okay for uh, the joint probability by the product rule, we can uh, calculate it by multiplying. For the round yellow, we are going to simply multiply their genotypes or their probabilities and we'll obtain the 9 by 16. Round yellow are 9 by 16. Round green, we we'll multiply their probabilities and we'll obtain the final probability 3 by 16. So wrinkled yellow, 3 by 16. For wrinkled green, we'll multiply the, these will obtain 1 by 16. Okay, so 9331 ratio for the dihybrid cross and we obtained their probabilities by multiplying the monohybrid cross results separately. Okay. Now, the test cross and the back cross. So what is test cross? Uh, given a purple flowered pea plant, we cannot tell if it is homozygous or heterozygous. Okay, because uh, phenotypically, if we are uh, seeing that a plant is purple flowered pea plant, so we cannot tell uh, that whether it is homozygous, genotypically it is homozygous dominant or it is heterozygous dominant. So how we can calculate it? To determine the genotype, we can cross this plant with a white flowered plant because we know the genotype of this white flowered plant as it as this trait as the white flowered trait is the recessive trait so we know that this is homozygous recessive okay so simply if all the offsprings of the cross uh, have the purple flower simply uh, we are having the uh, phenotypically dominant plant with the purple flowers and we don't know the genotype of this plant either it is homozygous dominant or heterozygous dominant so simply we'll take a recessive phenotypic plant with the white white flower color so we are going to cross these two plants no if we are going to uh, get the results uh, according to the first diagram uh, if uh, in your results all the plants are going to uh, are going to have the phenotypes of uh, the purple color so definitely uh, this um this this plant that is phenotypically uh, dominant this plant is uh, homozygous dominant you can see here okay 
Now, if uh, you are going to obtain the results in which half are uh, purple flowered and half are white flowered, so uh, this is just because the white uh, trait appeared because uh, one allele uh, came from this uh, recessive phenotypic plant, white flowered plant, and the second allele came from this plant. So definitely this plant is having one uh, recessive allele. So this uh, plant would be heterozygous dominant, okay? So if all the offsprings of the cross have purple flowers, so plant must be homozygous for dominant allele for this one. And uh, the cross uh, would be between the homozygous dominant and uh, homozygous recessive, okay? But if both the purple and white flowers appear in your uh, results, then uh, it uh, must be a heterozygous plant because uh, the uh, white flowers can only appear in homozygous recessive form and homozygous recessive form can only be completed if one allele or recessive allele is going to come from this white flowered plant and other recessive allele is come, going to come from this flower, this, this purple flowered plant, okay? So the offsprings of uh, the heterozygous dominant and the homozygous recessive will be one to one phenotypic ratio like this one. Okay, half are purple and half are white flowered plants. So, what is test cross? Breeding an organism of unknown genotype means you are not uh, um, knowing the genotype of uh, a phenotypically dominant individual. Okay, so this one is the breeding of an organism of unknown genotype with recessive homozygote to determine the genotype of uh, unknown phenotypically dominant organism that whether it is homozygous dominant or heterozygous dominant, okay? And this is such a cross in which we have a phenotypically the dominant plant. We have a cross in which we have a and genotypically the recessive plant with it so that we can see that the phenotypically dominant is genotypically homodominant or heterodominant, okay? Now what is back cross? So the back cross is uh, the mating of the hybrid organism. Yani we have two traits, hai, pure tall plant okay, and uh, dwarf plant. So in ki alleles or in ki gametes or we get a hybrid jo hai, wo plant milta hai with the uh, dominant and the recessive allele. So now we have the whole pass hai, usko completely the initial parental cross hai, usko confirm karne ke liye, uh, to achieve the offspring with the genetic identity closer to that of parent. Yani isko confirm karne ke liye, parentage ko confirm karne ke liye hum isko back cross karwate hai. So F1 generation ka jo pas hybrid plant hai ya hybrid organism hai F1 generation mein uska back cross karwaya data hai with the dominant with the um, genotypically uh, dominant plant, okay? So the mating of the hybrid organism, is hybrid organism ki mating hai with one of its parents or with an organism genetically similar to the parent, okay? So with one of its parents, iske ek parent ke saath cross karwaya jata hai, ab iski reason kya hai, ya is, iski jo hai, wo humare pas iska aim kya hai, back cross ka? Iska aim ye hai ki hum uh, genetic identity obtain kar sake us uh, hybrid ki closer to that of parent. So in this way, F1 generation, ठीक है, uh, uska uh, jo hai wo hum cross karwa rahe hai dominant parent ke saath, to ye dominant parent aur ye F1 generation, isme humar paas hai ye phenotype types hume dekhne ko nazar aati hai. The one ratio one tall and the, uh, you can say, the, the uh, all plants are the tall plants having the dominant alleles, okay? Now, the degrees of the dominance. So, the first one is the complete dominance. Complete dominance uh, is the way se hai. When a dominant allele jo hai wo ek recessive allele ke effect ko completely hide kar degi, hai? in the heterozygous condition. So, you can see here, uh, Mendel ki jo humar pas uh, crosses hai, and clearly hume nazar aa raha hai ki jo dominant allele hai, capital P, uh, it's going to hide the effect of the uh, recessive allele in heterozygous condition. Okay, so the dominant allele is for the purple color, or if the dominant allele is recessive allele with the heterozygous condition, then the recessive allele, which is white color, will hide its effect and will express itself. That's why the flower colors are purple. Okay. 
Now the incomplete dominance to have it's the interaction between two alleles that are expressed more or less equally and the heterozygote is different from either homozygote. ठीक है तो हमारे पास यहाँ पे दो plants हैं one is having red color and red color flowers and the other is having white colored flowers. ठीक है दोनों की जो है वो homo की form में homozygous की form में दोनों की हमारे पास alleles हैं अगर इनका क्रॉस करवाया जाए तो हमें जो है वो हेट्रो की फॉर्म में ये एलियस देखने को मिलती हैं लेकिन अब यहाँ पे कोई भी डोमिनेंट नहीं है कोई भी एक एलियल दूसरे के इफेक्ट को हाइड नहीं कर रही ना हमें यहाँ पे रेड नजर आता है और ना ही वाइट दीज प्लांट्स आर हैविंग द पिंक कलर्स ओके आई मीन टोटली इनकी जो फिनो है वो इंटरमीडिएट है बिटवीन द फिनो टाइप्स ऑफ दीज टू होमोजाइगोट्स ओके सो दिंक फ्लॉर्स और F2 टू जनरेशन में अगर F1 का क्रॉस करवाया जाए सेल्फ क्रॉस करवाया जाए तो F2 टू जनरेशन में हमें कम्प्लीटली अगेन जो है वो इनकी सेग्रीगेशन देखने को मिलती है ठीक है कोडोमिनस कोडोमिनस इज वेन बोथ द एलियस आर हैविंग द इक्वल इफेक्ट इन द हेट्रोजाइगोट कंडीशन सो अगर वेन हेट्रोजाइगोट एक्सप्रेस द फिनो टाइप्स ऑफ बोथ द होमोजाइगोट इसमें हमारे पास एग्जाम्पल है एम एन ब्लड ग्रुप ओके सो दीज आर दिनो दिन फॉर द एम एन ब्लड ग्रुप इज जीन एल ओके एंड देर आर टू एल द एल एम एंड द एल एन अगर हमारे पास जो है वो दोनों एलियस प्रेजेंट हों फॉर द एल एम एल एम ठीक है सो द फिनो टाइप विल बी एम एंड द एंटीजिन प्रेजेंट ऑन द रेड ब्लड सेल्स विल बी डोमिनेंट एम अगर एक दोनों जो हमारे पास एलियस हैं वो एन की एलियस हों तो फिनोटिपिकली जो इंडिविजुअल्स होंगे दे आर हैविंग द एन ब्लड ग्रुप ओके और जो रेड ब्लड सेल है उन पर एन एंटीजन बनेगी लेकिन अगर दोनों एक्सप्रेस हो जाए हेट्रो की कंडीशन आ जाए और एल एम और एल एन दोनों एलियस एक्सप्रेस हों तो जो इंडिविजुअल्स है दे आर हैविंग द एम एन फिनोटाइप एंड दोनों एम और एन जो एंटीजन है दे आर गोइंग टू प्रेजेंट ऑन द रेड ब्लड सेल्स तो एल एम और एल एन दोनों एलियस इक्वली एक्सप्रेस हो रही हैं एम का एन के ऊपर या एन का एम के ऊपर कोई भी एज सच इफेक्ट नहीं है ओके नाउ दी मल्टीपल एलियस सो बहुत से हमारे पास चीन ऐसे हैं दैट आर हैविंग मोर देन वन और टू टाइप्स ऑफ द एलियस ओके मोर देन टू टाइप्स ऑफ द एलियस और इसमें हमारे पास एग्जाम्पल है एबीओ ब्लड ग्रुप सिस्टम की फॉर द एबीओ ब्लड ग्रुप सिस्टम जीन इज आई ओके और ये जो जीन है दैट इज प्रेजेंट ऑन द क्रोमोजोम नंबर नाइन एंड This gene is having uh, three types of alleles, I A, I B, and uh, the recessive allele I. Okay, so I, uh, the small I, is recessive to the I A and I B, and uh, the I A and I B, these are neither dominant nor recessive. ठीक है? इनकी इनका भी जो है वो co-dominance वाला relationship होता है. दोनों equally express हो जाती हैं. Okay. अब हमारे पास यूनो typically four types के blood groups हैं. A, B, A B. and o okay now uh, you can see here the alleles these are the three types of alleles okay ye jo teen types ki alleles hain ye specific se specify kar rahi hain kuch carbohydrates ko the allele i a for the a carbohydrate the allele i b for the b carbohydrate and the recessive allele i is not specifying any carbohydrate okay so Uh, these carbohydrates are going to be um, present on the red blood cells. तो अगर हमारे पास जो genotypically जो allele I A है अगर इसका expression इस तरह का है यानी homo ये जो है वो homo की form में express होती है ठीक है दोनों I A I A alleles हों या अगर एक I A और दूसरी recessive allele हो तो दोनों के केस में क्या होगा कि carbohydrate A it's going to uh, be attached on the surface of the red blood cells or jo persons hain they are having blood group a agar genotypically hamare paas dono ib ib alleles ho ya ek ib aur dusri recessive allele ho to is case mein b carbohydrates are going to attach on the surface of red blood cells and the persons are having b blood group okay अगर हमारे पास जो है वो आई ए आई बी ये दोनों एलियस को डोमिनेंस की फॉर्म में एग्जिस्ट करें तो ए और बी दोनों कार्बोहाइड्रेट्स आर गोइंग टू अटैच ऑन द सरफेस ऑफ रेड ब्लड सेल्स शोइंग द ए बी ब्लड ग्रुप और अगर दो रिसेसिव एलियस हों तो फिर जो है वो किसी किस्म के कोई कार्बोहाइड्रेट्स जो है वो अटैच नहीं होंगे रेड ब्लड सेल्स की सरफेस के साथ ओके okay? 
and the persons are having O blood group. Now, what is erythroblastosis fetalis? <clears throat> so, uh, erythroblastosis fetalis is a severe medical condition that most commonly results from the incompatibility between the blood types of the women and the fetus. Okay. So, condition involves a component of the blood called the Rh factor. So, we have an ABO blood group system, which is according to four phenotypes. Persons are might having A, B, AB, or O blood group. Okay, four phenotypes. Hai, hai? Or, uh, we have to see this positive or negative sign AB blood group. Ke upar. So, this positive or negative sign. Hai, this is because of the Rh factor. Okay. तो इस के लिए हमारे पास जो है अगर इसके लिए जो जीन है आरएच फैक्टर के लिए वो डी है और अगर होमोजाइगस इसके लिए दो एलिल्स होंगी एक डोमिनेंट कैपिटल और एक रिसेसिव ठीक है स्मॉल अगर तो होमोजाइगस डोमिनेंट या हेट्रोजाइगस डोमिनेंट की कंडीशन हो तो पर्सन्स आर हैविंग द आरएच पॉजिटिव ब्लड ग्रुप और अगर होमोजाइगस रिसेसिव की कंडीशन हो तो पर्सन्स आर हैविंग द आरएच नेगेटिव Okay, so uh, if a person has the protein, uh, the, uh, they are Rh positive or the protein hai, ye kab synthesize hogi, that is attached to the red blood cells, ye tab synthesize hogi, the person's ki ye genotype hogi, homozygous dominant or heterozygous dominant. But if uh, the persons are not having this protein attached to the red blood cells, so they are Rh negative or Rh negative ye tab hongi, or ye protein tab nahi banegi if their genotype is recessive. Okay. Now, what is RH incompatibility? Uh, RH incompatibility is the case that if a woman is RH negative, hai, theke, her blood group is negative, hai, but th she is going to um, receive a fetus that is RH positive. Theke, to fetus is uh, warm, uh, it's going to uh, grow in the warm of the female. If it is RH positive, it is incompatibility. Ho sakti hai, so uh, one thing more ke jo rh uh, positive hai hamare paas rh positive uh, they are having the antigens and uh, rh negative are going to make the antibodies if uh, the rh negative uh, gets exposure to the rh positive blood okay rh positive mein antigens hai but no antibodies kyunki rh positive wale ke paas jo antigens hai to wo apne hi blood group ke against koi antibodies prepare nahi karte theek hai so RH negative in blood group hota hai unme pehle se uh, antibodies nahi present hoti lekin agar RH positive ke sath unka exposure ho jaye then they are going to synthesize the antibodies for the RH factor so agar RH negative blood or RH positive blood they are going to mix with each other to immune response hoga RH negative ka blood hai it's going to synthesize the antibodies for the RH positive or is the case RH positive blood jo hai, it's going to be um, it's going to be degenerated or you can say their their cells are going to be broken down okay so the body can produce the antibodies after contamination with RH positive blood from the needle or the blood transfusion okay so once sensitized the body's immune system will recognize any future RH positive cells RH positive blood from a fetus. So, if it is so, that a woman is RH negative, and the fetus is RH positive, and the fetus की body से जो है वो कुछ cells placenta को cross करके mother की body में move करें, तो mother is RH negative, तो वो उसके खिलाफ antibodies बनाना start हो जाएंगे, and these antibodies are now going to cross the placenta. Or placenta ko cross karke wo uh, phir jo hai wo fetus ki body mein enter hongi aur wahan pe jo fetus ke red blood cells hain unko destroy karna start kar denge okay now erythroblastosis fetalis destroys the red blood cells so destruction of red blood cells of the fetus can be rapid and uh, uh, as a result the fetus will not receive maximum oxygen which may lead to the anemia and even death uh, as the hemolysis continues, because the fetus ke cells are continuously wo, uh, jo hai, wo degrade, hote ja rahe hai, they are going to be broken down. So, the fetus ki body mein, uh, jo new red blood cells hai, unki production is very fast. Ho jati hai, hai? And we know that the red blood cells hai, they are going to be synthesized in the liver and the spleen. So, in the ki jo activity is very fast. Overproduction of the red blood cells, yani, very immature red blood cells produce karte hai, liver or spleen. 
दैट्स वाई लिवर और सप्रीन का जो साइज है वो एनलार्ज हो जाता है ठीक है सो वेन अ न्यू बर्न हैज दिस कंडीशन एक तो उस न्यू बर्न बेबी में क्या होगा कि लिवर और सप्रीन का साइज एनलार्ज होगा और दूसरा उनके रेड ब्लड सेल्स की कंटिन्यूस ब्रेकन ब्रोक डाउन की वजह से इनमें जो है वो एनीमिया हो जाएगी इसको हिमोलिटिक डिसीज भी कहते हैं ठीक है ब्रोकन डाउन ऑफ द रेड ब्लड सेल्स और एज द इमेज ऑफ रेड ब्लड सेल्स कंटिन्यू टू ब्रेक बिलिरुबिन इज द बाई प्रोडक्ट ऑफ द ब्रेक डाउन ऑफ द रेड ब्लड सेल्स इट्स गोइंग टू बी बिल्ड अप सो दैट्स वाई द न्यू बर्न बेबी इज गोइंग टू सफर फ्रॉम द जॉन्डिस कंडीशन तो हिमोलिटिक डिजीज एक ऐसी डिजीज है जिसमें न्यू बर्न बेबी के रेड ब्लड सेल्स की ब्रेक डाउन हो रही है और उनकी ब्रेक डाउन से बिलिरुबिन प्रोडक्ट बनेगा This bilirubin product is going to be accumulated in the blood, leading to the uh, jaundice condition. That uh, is when the skin and the eye whites of the infant turn yellow. So complications in the newborn may include. Severe early high levels of the bilirubin with the accompanying jaundice. Okay, anemia in the fetus. liver enlargement now what are the reasons of the mixing of uh, blood although it is rare for the blood between the woman and fetus to mix but uh, uh, during the pregnancy but it could happen as a result of uh, the placenta you know, when it's going to detach from the wall of the uterus during the delivery and uh, bleeding during the pregnancy the manual rotation of the breech baby abortion and ectopic pregnancy miscarriage a fall a blunt trauma or invasive uh, prenatal testing uh, prenatal tests such as the um, amniocentesis or chorionic villus sampling cvs okay now the pleiotropy so pleiotropy is when a single gene is having multiple phenotypic effects sab ek gene jo hai wo different tarah uh, ke phenotypes ko control karta hai traits ko control karta hai so that is known as the pleiotropy <coughs> like in garden pea the gene that determines the flower color uh, may also affect the color of coating on the outer surface of the seed okay which may be gray or white similarly a uh, white eye gene in drosophila may affect the shape of sperm storing organ spermatica theek hai to ek ek gene jo hai wo yahan pe ek se zyada traits ko control kar raha hai similarly humans mein jo growth uh, controlling gene hai it's also going to control the weight and height now the epistasis so epistasis is uh, the phenotypic expression of a gene at one locus uh, alters that of a gene at a second locus isme ek gene ka jo expression hai wo dusre gene ke expression ko hide karta hai in this we are having the example of the bombay phenotype theek hai hum uh, hame pata hai ki jo abo blood group system hai uh, having the two antigens ia and ib inka jo expression hai Uh, या आई ए आई बी की वजह से uh, जो एंटीजन ए है और एंटीजन बी है दे आर गोइंग टू बी सिंथेसाइज ठीक है लेकिन अब एंटीजन ए और एंटीजन बी इनकी अगर सिंथेसिस हो जाए यू कैन सी हियर कि अगर हमारे पास ये जीनोटाइप है तो एंटीजन ए की सिंथेसिस होगी और अगर ये जीनोटाइप है तो एंटीजन बी की सिंथेसिस होगी लेकिन सिंथेसिस के बाद हाउ दे आर गोइंग टू अटैच ऑन द रेड ब्लड सेल्स इनकी जो रेड ब्लड सेल्स के साथ अटैचमेंट है उसको एक और जीन कंट्रोल करता है दैट इज एच ठीक है तो एच जीन जो है इट इज लोकेटेड ऑन द क्रोमोसोम नंबर नाइनटीन सो अब एच जीन जो है उसके दो एक्सप्रेशन हैं होमोजाइगस डोमिनेंट और हेट्रोजाइगस डोमिनेंट ठीक है और दूसरा है जी होमोजाइगस रिसेसिव अगर तो ये जीन होमोजाइगस डोमिनेंट या रिसेसिव की कंडीशन में एक्सप्रेस होगा so it will insert a sugar on the glycoprotein on the surface of the red blood cell uh, so that antigen a or b uske sath attach ho sake theek hai agar ye expression hoga simply to uh, isse aapne yaad rakhna hai ki homozygous dominant aur uh, heterozygous dominant agar expression hai gene h ka on the chromosome number 19 to iski wajah se kya hoga a aur b antigens attach hongi red blood cell ke sath okay so you can see here अगर ये एक्सप्रेशन है डोमिनेंट uh, वाला तो ये अटैच हो रही है फॉर द ब्लड ग्रुप ए फॉर द ब्लड ग्रुप बी ठीक है और अगर दोनों जो है वो आई ए आई बी दोनों एंटीजें एट द सेम टाइम प्रेजेंट होंगी और इस जीन के डोमिनेंट होने की वजह से वो अटैच भी हो जाएंगी ठीक है लेकिन अगर हमारे पास ये जीन जो है वो होमोजाइगस रिसेसिव की फॉर्म में अपियर होगा ठीक है 
नो मैटर के ये एक्सप्रेशन है एंटीजिन के लिए जो है वो एंटीजिन ए की सिंथेसिस के लिए या बी की सिंथेसिस के लिए जीनोटाइप प्रेजेंट है और एंटीजिन की सिंथेसिस है ब्लड में एंटीजिन प्रेजेंट है एंटीजिन ए और बी लेकिन क्योंकि सेकेंड जीन जो एच जीन है वो रिसेसिव फॉर्म में अपीयर हुआ है दैट्स वाई ये जीन जो है इसके रिसेसिव फॉर्म में अपीयर होने की वजह से जो रेड ब्लड सेल के सरफेस है उसके साथ एंटीजन ए और बी अटैच नहीं हो सकती ठीक है सो इट कैन नॉट इंसर्ट द शुगर मोलिक्यूल एंड ग्लाइको प्रोटीन सो एच एच लैक द साइट फॉर अटैचमेंट ऑफ एंटीजन ए और बी टू आर बी सी सर्फेस Now, no matter A and B antigens are present in the blood, but they are not attached on the red blood cells surface because of the gene being expressed in the recessive form. Okay, so such type of the phenotype. Phenotypically, ये organisms अगर हम इसकी बात करें तो ये phenotypically तो O होगा because कोई antigen attached नहीं है red blood cell के साथ है. लेकिन genotypically ये A ही है. ठीक है. Similarly, phenotypically ये ओ है बट जीनोटिपिकली बी है ठीक है यानी एंटीजेंस बन तो रही हैं, बट दे आर नॉट बीइंग अटैच्ड ऑन द सरफेस ऑफ द रेड ब्लड सेल्स सो दिस इज नोन एज द बॉम्बे फिनोटाइप नाउ द पोलिजीनिक इनहेरिटेंस सो समटाइम्स वन ट्रेट इज बीइंग कंट्रोल्ड बाय मेनी जीन्स सच एज द ह्यूमन स्किन कलर और द हाइट एंड दीज आर द क्वान्टिटेटिव करेक्टर्स यानी ये क्वान्टिटेटिव करेक्टर्स हैं और जो है वो एक से ज्यादा जीन्स इनको कंट्रोल कर रहे होते हैं और क्वान्टिटेटिव है यानी इनमें जो फिनोटिपिक एक्सप्रेशन है वो बहुत ज्यादा है ठीक है टू एक्सट्रीमिटीज है उनके दरमियान इनको हम कंटिन्यूसली वेरिंग ट्रेड्स भी कहते हैं ओके सो पोलिजेनिक इनहेरिटेंस में वी हैव द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ द स्किन पिगमेंटेशन दैट इज कंट्रोल्ड बाई द थ्री कलर्स थ्री जीन्स ओके द जीन ए बी और सी अगर हमारे पास इस जीन का एक्सप्रेशन जो है वो इस तरीके से हो कि ऑल आर डोमिनेंट ए बी एंड सी सो द स्किन कलर वुड बी वेरी डार्क अगर तमाम जो जीन्स हैं दे आर हैविंग एक्सेसिव एलिव तो इट वुड बी वेरी लाइट ठीक है और अगर हम इसी तरीके से वेरी लाइट में एक इनमें से जो हमारे पास अलील है उसको डोमिनेंट कर दें तो कलर थोड़ा डार्क हो जाएगा अगर दो डोमिनेंट होंगी तो मजीद डार्क होगा तीन डोमिनेंट होंगी तो उससे भी ज्यादा डार्क होगा फिर चार डोमिनेंट होंगी तो मजीद डार्क होगा पांच डोमिनेंट होंगी तो मजीद डार्क होगा अगर छह की छह डोमिनेंट होंगी तो टोटली इट वुड बी वेरी डार्क कलर ओके सो यू कैन सी हेयर अगर तीन हमारे पास डोमिनेंट uh, है तो इंटरमीडिएट शेड होगा और इस तरीके से जो है वो हमारे पास हम, अगर डोमिनेंट नंबर डोमिनेंट एलिज का नंबर ज्यादा करते जाएं तो जो रेड कलर है वो भी डार्क से डार्क होता जाएगा ठीक है सो यू कैन सी हियर दीज आर द फिनोटाइप्स ओके दी लाइट यहाँ पे एक डोमिनेंट है ठीक है तो डार्क दो डोमिनेंट हैं तो डार्क तीन डोमिनेंट हैं ओके सो डार्क यू कैन सी ये बाय द कलर चार डोमिनेंट है तो डार्क पांच डोमिनेंट है तो उससे भी ज्यादा डार्क और अगर लास्ट पे छे की छे डोमिनेंट है तो वेरी डार्क कलर ओके सो दिस इज द पोलिजीनिक पॉली मीन्स मेनी एंड जीनिक मीन्स जीन दिस ट्रेट इज बींग कंट्रोल्ड बाई मेनी जीन्स एट वन टाइम ओके सो नाउ वी हैव डन विद द इनहेरिटेंस इन डिटेल श्योरली दिस वुड बी वेरी हेल्पफुल फॉर ऑल ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स एंड द कैंडिडेट फॉर द प्रिपरेशन ऑफ डिफरेंट कंपेरेटिव एग्जाम्स so now uh, inshallah we'll meet up with the next video uh, tab tak apna bahut sara khayal rakhiyega until then allah hafiz